The humble PDF might not look like much compared to some of the technologies we get to play with these days, but it is still by far the most common file type we use in learning and development. Let's talk about why that probably isn't such a good thing. For a long time now, PDFs have been the file type of choice for job aids, how-to guides, and general downloadable content within courses, on LMSs, and on websites. But there are some issues with this approach. PDFs fundamentally lack one key thing, accessibility. And whilst historically this might have been overlooked, this is a subject that is no longer on the sidelines. A massive part of the job of a learning and development professional is ensuring that every member of the audience can access and gain from the learning experience. So let's take a look at where PDFs come from and what those accessibility issues are. The Portable Document Format, or PDF, uh, was created in 1992 by Adobe. Uh, this was their attempt to create a file format that would be the same on any device and any compatible piece of software. Before this, documents would do all kinds of crazy things when you open them up on a different device. So this really helped to mean that what you designed was what people saw. A few years later, they made this an open standard and eventually became an ISO. So this makes it a global standard that anyone can use. This meant that Adobe no longer had sole rights to create PDF documents and to create readers for them. Thus, now you have hundreds of different PDF reader options, some web browsers can open them, and loads of different authoring tools can publish to PDF. Wonderful. However, this kind of variety means there is very little standardization in terms of the authoring process, how these files are organized. There's our first problem with accessibility. Now, the ISOs themselves do set out standards, and these were updated in 2008 and most recently in 2020. And the sort of PDF 1.4 is often regarded as kind of the, the most accessible PDF. Um, still not great though, and we'll talk about that later. But let's start by really taking a look at what the core accessibility problems are with PDFs. The first issue with PDFs is that they are not responsive. They're broadly designed around the idea of a, of a Word document, they're sheets of paper. Except a PDF becomes fixed at a certain size when it's published, and this means that you'll need to spend time zooming in and zooming out. Simply enlarging the window or the reader size does not increase the size of the document. Now this might sound like a small thing, but for those with limited motor skills, this is a huge impediment. For those who can't easily use a mouse or a keyboard, again, a huge impediment and an unnecessary one when so many other options are available. Next up, we have screen readers. PDFs are notoriously bad for compatibility with screen readers. Now, there are a lot of types of screen readers out there and very few things are compatible with everything, but those options are out there. PDFs sit on the opposite end of the spectrum with very limited compatibility. The main reason for this is the way that Adobe designed the PDF standard so it looked the same on every device was that it wouldn't use the same text formatting that most programs used. In very basic terms, rather than using standardized text formatting that you might find on a website or in a Word document, PDFs effectively contain lots of small images of letters and words and paragraphs. And this is fine until you try and use a screen reader and it's unable to decipher these things. It can cause total incompatibility where it can't detect any text, or it can split words in half, split up sentences or paragraphs. That can even lead to changing of meaning. This seems like a small thing, but for those who rely on screen readers, this makes a PDF completely unusable. Next up is the lack of automated formatting when creating a PDF. 
Now, when we work in something like a Word document or a HTML file, we use things like the headings one to six, and we tag certain elements of text as a logical order. If you're using something like Storyline, you might even create a tab order so that they can move through your content in a logical way when using keyboard controls. Standard PDFs lack this functionality by default. Now, tagged PDFs do exist, but you have to go out of your way to create them. And most PDFs do not qualify for this kind of bracket. They aren't compatible with screen readers for this purpose, but also those using things like keyboard navigation can struggle. Finally, just accessing PDFs can be difficult. Think about whenever you open a PDF document, what might happen when you click that button? It might download directly to your computer and then you have to go and find it and open it locally. It might open up there on the screen inside the course or within a player within an LMS. It might replace the current window or it might open as a new window or tab. There is no standardization across all platforms about what a PDF does when you click to open it. This lack of standardization means there are often additional impediments or walls in the way of someone just getting to the content. This is the kind of thing we would never allow inside our e-learning courses or in the training room. So the question has to be asked, why are we okay with it? Because it's a PDF. So there are a lot of issues with PDFs. However, let's be real. We're not going to turn around tomorrow, delete them all and start again. So what can we do? Well, first of all, let's look at what we can do within the realm of PDFs. First things first, make sure your PDF is a PDF 1.4 tagged PDF document. Make sure those tags are logical. Make sure your content is structured well. Make sure you add captions and alternative text to any images and strip out any unnecessary images or formatting. It's great that something looks lovely, but if that means someone can't actually learn from it, it doesn't have any value. Next up, consider how people are going to be accessing your PDF. Make it very clear whether it's a button, an underlined link, whatever it may be, that what they're about to do is going to access a PDF. Where possible, have it open automatically in a new tab or within the current screen. Neither of these options is ideal, but they provide the least resistance and friction to the overall experience. Whether it's a button or a link, the best practice is to have the instruction, whether it's go here for this or the name of the document, and then have PDF in brackets just after that. You'll see this in a lot of websites and an increasingly large number of pieces of e-learning. It really is the best way to give people a heads up just to say, hey, look, this is going to open a PDF. Finally, always ask yourself, does this need to be a PDF? We often embed them in authoring tools or in LMSs when the question surely then is, why are we not building this information into this existing platform? Why are we adding a break, a wall, a barrier to this content? Now, there are times when you want it to be separate, where you want someone to download something and take it away or use it for something. That doesn't make PDF the right choice. On that note, let's look at some alternatives to PDF. So first up, we have even more humble than the PDF, the Word document. And I know, I know, Word documents can be edited by the user, but so can PDFs these days. So let's set that argument aside straight away, because that was always why people went for PDF. They can be edited easily and for free online. So Word documents, much better from an accessibility perspective. In fact, the main menu in Word actually has an entire set of tools for accessibility. Tagging, tab order, captions, alternative text, making sure you've got the different heading styles in place so that screen readers can pick up on them. And when it comes to screen readers, docx files have the broadest compatibility out there. This really is a fantastic standard. However, I appreciate Word documents are very difficult to get looking quite as slick and professional as a PDF. So what would be a great alternative to that? The answer, HTML web pages. 
Now immediately, the idea of launching a website every time you create some learning is insane, right? Well, maybe, but maybe not. Pretty much everywhere now has somewhere you can host a HTML page. Be that your LMS, be that your local intranet, your knowledge base, loads of options available. And creating a, a single HTML page is easier than it's ever been before. With options such as Webflow and WordPress, but also options more locally and simpler like BPro, the email creator that also allows you to create one-off HTML pages. You can even host them inside a piece of e-learning, whether it's Storyline or Evolve or Adapt or Captivate, whatever it is that you might use. HTML pages represent the best option here. They are the most accessible and give you the most visual control going. So, let me know down in the comments. Will you be swapping out your PDFs for Word or HTML pages or something else? Have you started doing that already? And if so, what option have you gone for? Do let me know. I'd love to see some fantastic examples of more accessible design. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. If you didn't like this video, watch it again at 75% speed. Maybe you'll enjoy it more.